All right, um, welcome to this talk. Uh, Houston, we've got a problem. How to debug your pipeline in Tecton. Uh, I am uh, Vincent Demister, principal software, senior principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I am one of the lead of uh, the Tecton project. And I'm Vipo, uh, I also work at Red Hat, and I work on a lot of Jenkins stuff, and Tecton as well. And yeah, today we are going to talk about how to debug your pipeline in Tecton. Uh, all right, so let, let's go through the agenda. Um, first, we'll define a little bit uh, what do we mean by debug in debug what. Uh, then we'll uh, go rather quickly on what is Tecton in Tecton in a nutshell. Uh, hopefully, you know already a bit what is Tecton when going to this talk, but if you don't, uh, this will be a really quick introduction to Tecton. Then uh, We'll do a little bit of magic in Russian dolls, uh, explaining how all this works. Uh, and VBAP will do a demo and, and we'll finish with the next steps uh, after, after, after this demo, after this work, what will be the next steps. So first, uh, debug what? So um, let's talk a little bit about, about debugging. So uh, debugging is the process of identifying and removing errors from computer hardware and software. And in this case, uh, we'll be talking about debugging, but it'll be in terms of pipelines. So, and debugging pipelines themselves. So what do I mean by when, like debugging pipelines and what are pipelines? Uh, so pipelines, uh, pipelines usually is a, a linear, 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 linear sequence of specialized module used for pipelining. Uh, basically, this means uh, you do a task uh, or an action, then another action, then another action, and some can be in sequence, some can be in parallel. Uh, there's a lot of types of pipeline. There's data pipeline. There's uh, uh, even pipeline. There's a lot of type of pipeline in our context, in the context of this talk, we're mainly talking about um, CI, CD pipelines. And in our example, it's more accurately be useful in a continuous integration pipeline. But yeah, we will focus on the CI, CD pipelines. Uh, but this could probably uh, apply to other type of pipeline that can be done inside Tekton if, if we wanted to. Yeah, so why would we ever want to debug our pipelines? Uh, now, if there is a pipeline which works on your machine, but not on the CI, it's very hard to understand why it's not working on the CI because you would need to understand what is the environment uh, the pipeline is running in, and that would be the CI environment, and you would need to get access to the CI environment and understand this thing. So. Uh, debugging pipelines could be helpful in this way where you just get access to the CI environment and uh, figure out why it's not working on the CI. But then there are also times when it only runs on the CI and you can't, you can't run it on your machine because of resource constraints and you will have to debug your pipeline while it is running and go to a particular part of the pipeline and debug it there. Then while, it is, while you're debugging that same pipeline, on the CI, the, there is a possi possibility that you you won't be able to fix it if you are just uh, passing some parameters uh, around and you never understand where the error is happening because you run the pipeline, you see the error, you fix it, you run it, you see the, you see the same error, you fix it again, and you keep doing this till you get really frustrated and you probably want to leave your job at that point, but you can't do that. And you have to keep debugging pipelines as they are. But there are better ways to debug pipelines and instead of doing it in this way, and some CI tools allow you to debug pipelines while they're running and uh, they provide uh, great support for this. Some of these examples are Circle CI, Build, Travis, uh, which, which do this very well. So getting inspiration from this, we uh, in Tecton figured that we could do this in Tecton as well. 
Right. So, uh, how how uh, how would you debug pipelines? So this is kind of explaining what we will do in Tekton and what other tools kind of do in some manner. Um, so debugging pipeline, uh, what do you want for for it to do? One once one first. Uh, you want to be able to pause the execution of your pipeline at at demand, uh, so anywhere uh, if the user wants to, and or in case of a failure, so some steps or some action failed, I want to stop the execution there and be able to drop in. So we want to to allow the user to drop in directly in the CI environment, so it sees what files are there, um, what processes are running. Um, anything really that could help them uh, debug more what happened and why it failed and probably also re-execute some stuff in the context of uh, the environment, the CI environment. And of course, once we allow the user to drop in the CI environment, we want to allow him to continue or break the flow. So uh, if he feels like he knows what's happening, he fix it manually for this run and wants to see if there's on anything else that uh, that will fail later, he can continue it with success and let the pipeline continue running. Or if he knows how to fix it, he's pretty sure it's it's not gonna fail after. He can just go ahead, uh, fix it, and thus he wants just to uh, not consume too much resources and break the flow, uh, finish the, the pipeline as it, it would have been without the debug. Uh, and uh, how we will do this in Tekton, we'll dig a little bit more uh, uh, how we do this in Tekton, but this is based on uh, TEP, the number uh, 42. So TEP stands for Tekton Enhancement Proposal. And this TEP is about adding breakpoint on failure for uh, steps inside a task run. This is focused on task run to start the work, but uh, this TEP is gonna extend more and more as, as we go. Uh, so, first, let's go quickly on uh, what is Tekton uh, for uh, those who are um, who do, do not know what is Tekton or have a really general idea of it. Uh, if you do know Tekton very well, uh, the next few minutes will probably be a little bit boring, but it's okay. Um, so, what is Tekton in a nutshell? Uh, Tekton is a, an open source project. Uh, that aims to provide a set of standard and shared and shareable components for building a Kubernetes style CI CD system. Uh, this is governed by the Continuous uh, Delivery Foundation, the CD Foundation, uh, which is a kind of a cousin of the CNCF. Um, and contributions are coming from uh, literally everywhere in the world and, uh, and lots of companies. Uh, some of the most important ones are Google, Red Hat, CloudBees, IBM Pivotal, and D2YQ. There's many, many more. Um, it's a really uh, high, uh, highly active uh, community right now. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, a little bit more. Uh, so Tekton allows you to uh, write declarative pipelines with standard custom, uh, Kubernetes custom resource. This means we're using the exact same mechanism you use for services, deployments, pods in Kubernetes, but to, to be able to declare pipelines. Um, everything runs into containers, so Tekton itself, the so control plane, etc., are running inside containers. And any steps, any task, anything that you might do inside your pipeline will be uh, running in, uh, in containers. Uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, you can do almost whatever you want inside um, inside your pipeline because as long as it runs into a container, it, it's gonna run into pipeline. One example is you can build images using Kubernetes tools, Kubernetes tools inside uh, your task. Uh, you can use whatever tools you want and then uh, through parameters and through results and through resources, you can uh, reuse what you just built somewhere else. Uh, so you can use source image, build, I can echo, whatever you want. You can deploy to multiple platforms. So of course you can deploy on Kubernetes. Uh, so anything like the Kubernetes pods, uh, deployment services, 
uh, serverless, etc. But you can literally deploy on anything as long as you have tools inside your containers allowing you to do that. One example that we have upstream is um, there's some task uh, that allows you to uh, create a mini uh, Mac Mini uh, VM. I don't I don't even know if it's a VM or not. Maybe it's a, a real one. Uh, somewhere in the cloud, deploy something in there, run your tests, get back the, the results as everything is used, is, is kind of running into containers, you can do this. Uh, and it provides a set, or it aims to provide a set of powerful user interface. Um, right now we do have a command line tool, an official command line tool, and an official dashboard, the command line tool being TKN. And yeah, let's dig a little bit more into the Tecton concepts now. So there are a few concepts in Tecton that really help to understand how uh, the Tecton pipeline itself works. So uh, these would be step, task, pipeline, task run, and pipeline run. And we couldn't think of these uh, resources in uh, two different of two different kinds. Uh, the first one would be the definitions. Second would be the executions. Among the definitions, we've got task and pipeline, where a task is a list of steps that run sequentially in the same pod, and each step is uh, by itself running in a container. And a pipeline is a graph of tasks with inputs and outputs executed in a certain order. And a pipeline, and when we say a graph of tasks, we mean that these pipelines can be uh, made of uh, can be made of different tasks together. And these can be pre-existing tasks, new tasks that you can create uh, right in the pipeline itself. And then you can just basically compose different tasks together to form a pipeline. And this really shows the composability of Tecton itself when it comes to creating pipeline. And to run each of these tasks in pipeline, to have these uh, uh, as reproducible as possible. You can just define these tasks and pipelines once and then run uh, the equivalent run uh, resources, which are that you have a task run for a task and you have a pipeline run for a pipeline. So if you want to run a task with certain parameters, uh, you would basically create a task with a task run. And uh, you, when you create this task, run, you can give any parameters that you want uh, the task to run with. If there are some of the parameters you would want to run the task in the future, you can do that as well. You just have to provide different parameters in that case. And the same is the case with pipeline run. You already have your pipeline uh, with the tasks which can run either in sequence or in parallel. And uh, you just provide a pipeline run uh, in which, which has all the inputs that, that are necessary for the pipeline. And then you, you can just run the pipeline. Run. And in this way, you can just keep testing your tasks and pipelines with different parameters and you can compose different pipelines with multiple different tasks and you never have to uh, have uh, have to write different pipelines every time even if you're using the same functionalities you before so tecton is in this way like very uh, reproducible and composable and it makes it easy for the users to just kind of get down and start making pipelines easily if you have a certain set of tasks. And a lot of these tasks are present in the task catalog so the user can just start building their own pipelines. Okay, so uh, let's look at, um, so let's look at uh, what a pipeline looks like here. Uh, so you can see that there's a pipeline and then there are four tasks over here. And the first task is running uh, the first three steps and each of these steps runs in a container of itself. Then the output is being passed uh, to the next two tasks, which are running in parallel. And the second task, which is there, is sending its output as an input for the last task, which is there. And you can see that the first task is running by itself, the second two in parallel, and third one by itself. And uh, this is just a definition of the pipeline and the task that it references or has defined in, defined in the pipeline itself. So to run this pipeline, actually, you have to provide a pipeline run and which sees that there's an execution of the pipeline, which creates task runs in itself to create each of these tasks, uh, task runs and execute them. 
and uh, before there were there were pipeline resources and uh, uh, currently they are they are being deprecated and they are replaced with uh, they are replaced with uh, inputs uh, other kind of inputs such as uh, workspaces and parameters workspaces are basically uh, places where uh, uh, resources can be shared or data can be shared uh, through volumes and uh, inputs can be given via parameters also uh, and these two concepts replace pipeline resources completely um, let's look at uh, let's now look at like what a task run actually looks like because in this demo and in this uh, scenario we are going to focus on how to debug a task and uh, in the future we should be also able to debug a pipeline run but for now we'll only focus on a task so let's talk about uh, what a task actually looks like. Okay, uh, so here in the task, uh, we've got a spec and there are steps uh, which we can define in the task. And we are going to focus on this task, uh, not this task in particular, but we're going to focus on tasks and task runs and try, uh, trying to debug them. Uh, so in the future, we should also be able to debug pipelines, pipeline runs. Uh, uh, so for now, we are going to look at this task and create a task run from this task and trying to, I'm going to try and debug it. So let's actually understand what debugging looks like and how we've uh, gone ahead and implemented it. For that, we look at something called the Russian doll entry point hack. Uh, and Vincent, you'd like to go ahead with it. Uh, yeah, so let's dig a little bit about the Rishendol debug. Um, so we use Rishendol uh, uh, as a reference, uh, mainly in, 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 in reference to the talk that Christy Wilson and Jason Hall from Google uh, did uh, in, in 2019 in, in KubeCon, uh, where they uh, described a little bit what Tecton uh, was doing uh, uh, what Magic Tecton was doing um, to be able to run containers in sequence inside a pod, uh, because this is some need we had uh, to be able to control the flow of execution inside a pod, and 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 this this talk is is a bit uh, going through the through through this. So I, I I'll I'll let you uh, after uh, watch this if if it's interesting, but. In uh, okay. in a gist, uh, what it what we do? Uh, let's just first uh, define what we mean by entry point, and then what this hack is all about in in one one slide. Uh, so an entry point in the container world is whatever binary or command that is uh, gonna run when the container starts. It's either specified by uh, in, by the image itself. Uh, so if you build your image using Dockerfile, for example, on the left, um, it's whatever uh, was defined as using the entry point keyword. Um, if uh, you don't want to use the image entry point, you can always specifically, uh, explicitly uh, define the entry point uh, when you describe your, comp your container. So inside a pod it's going to be a container step which is in the step container spec which is what we have in the in the steps in the task on the, on, on the right so you are always able to define or override the entry point you want when you start a container but yeah this is what we mean by entry point and uh, the talk uh, that Jason and Christy did um, resumed in one slide is we do overload the user uh, entry point, so either the, the entry point that comes from the image or the one that the user provide. We override override this one with our own one we control. Uh, this is a binary called uh, entry point. So we, what what Tecton does when it schedules uh, a pod for a task, it's uh, copying itself, the entry point, inside each and every container. Uh, so that we can we know what we execute. Then uh, we do uh, change the entry points to be 
our own entry point and then in arguments the whatever was the original entry point so if the user didn't specify anything we'll check what was the image entry point and then we will append it to our, our arguments if the user provided something we will append it to, to ours so for example if the user wanted to do a ls l uh, as entry point uh, in a really simple way this is going to be executed as our entry point then ls l um, and thus we can control uh, whatever it gets executed and thus the third the third step is going to be our binary is waiting for some signal to start we are using uh, files uh, from previous uh, um, previous steps if if there's any previous and then if we got the signal we just run the initial uh, command that the user provided uh, and then when it's done we can uh, gather uh, the result so gather if it failed or not which exit point it was and signal the next step so in the na natural normal flow uh, if the command failed we will write that it's an error and the next step uh, entry point will know that the previous step failed and, 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 and skip uh, and, and, and so on for all, all the other steps. So this is how the entry point works. If you're interested in digging more, uh, I'll, I'll let you watch the, the, the talk after. But uh, for our debugging purpose, we needed uh, to enhance this. Uh, and this is where the debug uh, breakpoint story happens. So as uh, Vincent, you said, like to uh, actually start debugging and like, you know, providing the feature for debug, what uh, we've had to uh, kind of expand this entry point hack and a little bit flip it over its head and uh, use this hack to actually control the life cycle of the steps itself so that uh, when a step is executing and it uh, fails, the step should stop at the failure and not stop the execution of the uh, task run itself. And the user should be able to go into the environment and then uh, debug it and troubleshoot and figure out what's the issue and then go back and you know fix the issue that was that is there that they found so for this uh, what we do is uh, first of all we mark the task run as debuggable by adding the debug uh, spec and also um, adding where we want the breakpoint to be on failure over here is a dynamic breakpoint which basically uh, stops the step stops like the task run on any step that fails. So uh, how many of the steps fail, uh, the step would be paused at that point and the user can basically gain access to the environment of the uh, step at that point. And what what is done is uh, when the user gets environment access, they can debug, do whatever they want over there and then they can after that continue the step uh, from there by marking the step either as a success or a failure. So to continue uh, and break the breakpoint uh, and mark the step as the failure, uh, we provide scripts uh, which help to uh, do all these things. Uh, so we, we provide the debug continue script which basically marks uh, the step as a success and then breaks the breakpoint. And uh, the user can also mark the step as a failure by using the debug fail continue script and the step would be marked as a failure. And in the end, the task run would also be marked as a failure. Uh, so when this execution is complete, uh, the user can basically go ahead and uh, kind of get, get an idea of what exactly failed so that they can go back to the task run and fix it over there. So yeah. Um, now we'll actually look at uh, how to do this in uh, like in an actual demo and let's go ahead with it. Okay, so uh, we are running Minikube and with Tekton installed and you can see that there is a Tekton controller and webhook pods over here. And 
what we are going to do is we are going to run a task a uh, task run which contains a task spec so we don't have to create a different task uh, and this is going to have a, a task which is going to write a file uh, and then start it and then read the file uh, and let's see how that goes so this and somewhere along the way the task is going to fail and we will we'll probably figure out by the end like how we can debug and uh, fix the task so let's go um i'm going to go ahead and create this task which is called step script bash uh, and then you can see here that the task run has been created uh, called step script and a generated name and it's in pending mode because the pod is initializing task run pod is initializing and over here we should be able to see the task run logs which come up so we'll just wait for a sec till that comes right up okay so uh, you can see the task uh, task run is running and but you can see in the logs also that we have got an error in the start step uh, which says that cannot start shared data new write no such file or directory so uh, i don't know what's going on here let's go back and check uh, in the task run itself like what happened considering like we are on on failure right now uh, we can see this debug uh, steps saying that skipping writing on writing to the post file is related to debug and what we'll do is we will get into this pod and go to the step start container which is basically step dash uh, step name that is the container name format for this so this is a step that we are going into we're going to see like what is going on we uh, so we are using the ubuntu uh, image here so there is the bash uh, shell so we are able to use it so we are in the bash shell in the container right now and what we are going to do is we are going to check uh, cannot start shared data new write so we are going to going to check if new write is there or not just in case so there is no such file or directory let's just go ahead and share data if we can figure this out so we are in shared data oh it seems like there is data in the shared data i'm going to read it okay there is something there is awesomeness inside now what we are going to do is we are going to uh okay now we know that the data is in data uh file and not in new write file so we are going to go uh, to the task run and try i'm going to try and debug it so the task run that we ran was the step script bash in the step script bash uh, so the second step so the write was seem to work well and the start is doing a start on shared data new write which is wrong because it seems like it's writing to data and not new write so i'm going to go ahead and fix this right away uh, and then considering that uh, considering that at the end in the last step we are reading shared data data so i think it should work so we'll just mark this step as a success for now so let's go back to the container and then mark this task run as a success so i'm going to uh, so how do i mark this as a success so i'm going to go to tecton debug scripts and in the scripts we have uh, so these are the debug scripts which come along with uh, the debug spec and the user can use to either mark the uh, step as a success or as a failure and close the breakpoint at the same time uh, so i'm going to go ahead and run the debug continue script over here and yep so the pod terminates and the task run is marked as a success over here and you can see that see that you we find read awesomeness over here as well uh, so basically the task has passed with success now let me just go and 
test out if our the check that we made the debugging that we did came to fruition after changing uh, the new write to data uh, so i'm going to run the same task run again uh, so we've got we got this task run right here it's uh, the pod is initializing it's running uh, it will start running soon i hope right so I, I, as as uh, we saw and as we are seeing it right now uh, we were able to, to quickly get in the container and see what was inside and it helped us see that we were looking at the wrong file so yeah this was pretty useful viva right now decided to mark the step as a, the the step in the test as a success because we knew the next step would, would uh, succeed uh, but we could have done uh, the the opposite, like doing uh, marking it as fail and and just have a new one. I, I don't know if you want to demo that. Or not. Let's actually see how that works. So how marking a failure works, and if it actually marks the task as a failure. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and start again the wrong uh, wrong file. Uh, and then we'll try to uh, run this again. Uh, and let's let's mark this as a failure and see how it goes. So I'm going to create this again. And this one, as we know, it should fail uh, on the second step. So uh, let's, let's get the pod for the task run. And let's, uh, let's wait for the step to fail yeah so we have this fail step over here again so we're going to go ahead and in it and then uh we we know we know the drill and we know that the uh, file is wrong and but we are just going to mark the step as a failure so we are going to run the uh, script for failure so debug fail continue uh, so i'm going to run this and even if even if the task uh, continued and we had the output the step failed so you can see that uh, uh, task run over here is in a failed status so in this way like you can mark this as a success or a failure uh, so let's recap the demo and <laughs> Let's recap the demo and see like what we did basically. So there was a task run which we executed and a step in the task run failed. So uh, we had already provided debug breakpoint on failure in the spec. So the task run uh, did not complete the execution, rather it halted so that the user can come in for debugging. And uh, when the task run was halted, the user could get access to the debug environment in this case, that is a step container and the uh, user could figure out okay, why the step failed and then uh, mark the step as a success after failure, uh, after after it failed. So uh, they can just let the task and continue as it did. Uh, then, the, then after figuring it out, the task and continues executing with no problem. The user now knows uh, the reason why the step failed in the first place. So, this basically uh, didn't involve any kind of, uh, you know, hacky processes internally. It did, it did, but externally it did not uh, let the user to, you know, figuring figure out like, okay, why did this fail? I probably need to run this again. The user had to run the task run just once. The failure happened only once, and they were able to uh, debug it, understand the root cause of uh, failure and then uh, go ahead with the, running the task run again. All right, so um, this is more or less the current status of our um, proposal and, and our work. Uh, let's see what are the next steps um, for this. So uh, there's a few things that we need to enhance or uh, add uh, to have a more complete uh, debug feature. One one thing is right now there's a, a kind of shortcomings which is 
if you uh, are using uh, inside your steps uh, an image that uh, doesn't have um, uh, doesn't have a shell um, then the debug scripts won't work you won't be able to continue or or break the flow because we need a shell to do that uh, one thing that we would like to provide for this reason and for other uh, useful reason uh, is uh, for Tekton to be able to provide its own shell um, uh, probably as part of the entry point itself either uh, the same binary or using the entry point inje in injection hack to uh, inject another binary this would be useful because then no matter what image is used inside your step you could debug it but it would also mean no matter what um, no matter what uh, image you use, you could use the script feature uh, of, of Tecton. Uh, then we also want to support more modes or breakpoints that the user can provide. We demode the only mode that is uh, currently supported, which is um, the unfailure mode. Uh, we would like probably to uh, add more uh, things like um, uh, debug on each steps or specify the steps that we want to debug those kind of things we need to support and probably the same on on the pipeline itself so be able to say i want these and these tasks to be debuggable but not the other ones um, in addition uh, we would like probably to go forward we, we kind of uh, are waiting for feedback of the community but uh, we are thinking of uh, in the future being able to actually do the software debug of a process running in the CI uh, directly from your IDE so uh, the flow would be something like I do uh, run my pipeline uh, there's some end-to-end uh, -end test that runs and my service is running and is opening a port to debug I would be able uh, would like to be able to uh, hook my IDE on this running process somewhere and just uh, do the, my, my usual IDE debugging uh, feature uh, on there. Um, and of course, one of, uh, probably one of the most important next step is uh, the, a better user experience. So uh, we would like to make it even uh, more easier for the user to uh, actually debug his steps or his pipeline. Uh, so integrate it with TKN, the, the Tekton official a client or dashboard where you could just see it failed and it's in a debug uh, it's in a debug mode so uh, just do it can debug and get dropped in or from the dashboard just okay it's in debug mode just drop me in in, in the in the shell and of course uh, more tooling integration so integrate it directly within your IDE being IntelliJ being uh, VS Code etc and those, those are uh, the next step that we are seeing right now. Uh, of course, we are open to any feedback on, on this uh, because it's not set in stone. It's going to be an experimental feature to start with. Um, so yeah, we, we would like to hear from you. And yeah, thank you for, for uh, attending this talk. Uh, as other virtual talk, we are available on, on chat for questions. Uh, so yeah, thank you for... for listening to us and, and watching this, co this talk. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.